Okay, today we are going to talk about notable women of the Middle Ages. It starts from 476 to 1500 Common Era. 476 is a significant time because it marks the sack of the Rome. The Roman Empire has fallen. So, and that is why it's called the Medieval Ages and it goes to 1500s when the Renaissance has begun. Can someone tell me before we get started, what do you think of the Middle Ages? When you think of the Medieval Ages, what do you think? Pretty rough times. Mm -hmm. What? Pretty rough times. Rough times? Nasty. Nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, for instance, you see, when you see movies about King Arthur, you always see him in his chain mail walking around like in Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> and you always see him with swords in their hand. Camelot, it's a silly place. Yeah, Camelot is a silly place. Okay, so why am I interested in the medieval ages? Well, the, middle, the medieval ages is really an important time period. For instance, it's what set off Christianity and spread throughout Europe. And you see how England has kings and queens with Europe? That started with the Middle Ages. They all had kings and queens and it lasted throughout, throughout Europe. And another important thing about the Medieval Ages is that they started primary school. You see, little kids go to school because the Middle Ages kids went to school. And also, it gave rise to the middle class. Before then, it was just aristocracy and the peasants. But with the Middle Ages, there was a new kind of class, the middle class. Also, universities and colleges sprung out in the Middle Ages. So, it is important because Middle Ages has so many contributions that affect today's world. The colleges are based off of the Middle Ages curriculum. And another thing about the Middle Ages is, when you think of the Middle Ages, they, um, they have a when you think of the Middle Ages, there is a lot of women didn't have rights, but women could. They could inherit property, and they could also sell or own property. You could sell or buy property with the husband's consent. Oh, and the Magna Carta, it was created in the Middle Ages and it is the basis of our government. So the government reflected off of the Magna Carta because without the Magna Carta, there would not have been a, the third independence, the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution because it shows that it belongs to the people. The government, it gave the first idea that the government belongs to the people. Okay, women in the peasant class. Infancy. Mothers often breastfed their children for one to two years. Peasants could not afford a nurse, but so their parents had to raise them by themselves. However, if the birth mother dies, a nurse would be a sub for the mother, so the m nurse would wait, raise the mother. 
Babies were often swaddled and kept in the cradle, so they had cradles in that mothers would put their babies in the cradles. They also had cradles. They also had baby rattles that they used. And working fathers and mothers often carried their babies everywhere. If you read the accounts, they, when they were working their farms, they had to put their babies on their back mm. while they were working. And babies had a high mortality rate due to diseases, but most of the time in the Middle Ages, they were killed due to carelessness because parents had to work little babies like six years old had to watch the babies for them and because of negligence the can you imagine giving a your child to a six-year-old <laughs> yes so it resulted in fires because of the because they weren't paying attention to their siblings so it off babies often died in their cradle because their little brother was not paying attention to their sibling. Did families have enough to eat? Was there much famine? There was a lot of famine and they had to have their own food. They grew their own food on a vegetable plot. And didn't half of that food have to go to whoever was owning the land that they lived on? It was their personal use. But the cattle is also their personal use. But they collected and tilled the landlord's land, but they had their own personal land that they could use for food. If you have any questions, just let me know and raise your hand. Childhood. Childhood basically ends when your first permanent teeth came in. So it was not much of a childhood. And around that age is typically about six to seven years old. And peasant children spent their childhood with their parents. P parents have often, historians believe that parents did not take have any emotional ties with their children because they went to work. And children at six years old were expected to work at an early age, not only on their parents' farm, but also on the Lord's manor. So they had to work for their Lord. Before they were 12 years old, children were working for wages, so they were getting paid to work. In most regions, they do little chores like guarding geese, sheep, or cattle. When not working, the children like to sing and dance or play. Play was an important aspect of a child's life. Young girls were given ragged dolls to play with. Some of these dolls were constructed from materials available at home like spare rags, fabric, or wool. This is because the parents couldn't afford to give them luxurious items. Next page. <laughs> Marriage. Marriages were often arranged by their families. Girls were married young. The earliest age was around 12 years old. The bride was also given a dowry. The husband ruled the household and property. Men could divorce their wives, but the women could not. <laughs> Men were also, women were also expected to give birth to a large number of sons. This was to help them with daily chores at home. The risk of childbirth was high that it would result in death. Obviously, the lack of medicine, training, and sterility were big factors. Women were in charge of the children and had basic medical knowledge to care for them. So women had to have basic medical knowledges to take care of their child. Daily life. 
Many women worked as agricultural laborers or as servant girls in the Lord's manor. The women would rise early, sometimes at 3 a.m., to do their household chores. So they would always wake up at 3 sometimes to do their chores. They would clean, draw water, and bring it home, stoke the hearth, cook breakfast, buy wheat at the nearest meal, make cheese, tend to small animals, or work in vegetable plot by their house. So they had to do all this, and the men didn't have to do much, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Women also had to work the fields as their husbands. They would weed, hoe, and sow pulses. They also worked at harvesting. In villages, the men would guide the plow while the women spurned the animals with their goad and guided them. Peasant women sold surplus agricultural produce to markets and fairs, so whatever they made, they went to the market and fair and sold it. Women's wages were lower than men's, so because this is an issue of today. You know how people complain about women not making as much as men? Well, they did that in the Middle Ages. <laughs> but, however, because they were cheap, most of their landlords of the estate would hire them, a woman, more than a man. So, they would get more work because they were cheaper. Women would also tend to the animals and do sitting and winnowing. Women who worked as servants would work for rich families or become maid servants. This is a picture of peasant clothes. Because peasants were poor, many peasant women only had one set of clothing. The women made their own clothes. They mostly wore long dresses and stockings made of wool. Their clothes were never washed, so they didn't wash their own clothes. Wow. The women wore clogs made of thick leather. In winter, women wore cloaks made of wool. They also wore wool hats or linens. This is a reason why they wore Leather is because they used to walk differently on their shoes. They walked from toe to toe rather than heel to heel like we do now. So here is a video of how people walked in the Middle Ages. Can I actually try walking like that for a few minutes? I couldn't even do it for more than just a few steps. I mean, it's just totally unnatural. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yep. But it's just weird. <laughs> We've been trained the other way. And they even fight like that, which is very interesting because before people were wondering why were they on their toes instead of their heels, but they maneuver better, right? Yes, to maneuver better. And like they said, you can't be slouching, you must have good posture so you can walk. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why it changed in the Middle Ages is because of the way of uh, footwear. They started having heels in the Renaissance, which changes the way we walk today. But before that, they were wearing leather shoes, so they had softer footwear, whereas in the Renaissance, it became more rigid. Well, he, he mentioned like the... Uh, streets and everything became mm -hmm. some paved with cobblestones yeah. and stuff like that. But Cut the paper for that. Cobblestones and stuff like that. Um, in the Renaissance, yeah. yeah. Okay, women in towns. Most of the townswomen were typically of middle class and merchant. The poorest girls in urban towns would not be educated. However, the townswomen 
in the middle class were expected to read and write in the vernacular language. They did not know Latin, so they had to learn in the vernacular language. And girls, poor girls, they would have to work. But this is typically the middle class. And have any of y'all read the Counterbury Tales? by the wife of Bath is falls into this category. Chaucer? Yes. If you read the wife of Bath tale in Probably. the Canterbury Tales, this is where the wife of Bath would fall into. In some cases, daughters of merchants and guilds would be sent to school for apprenticeship. So if you were a daughter, you could become a merchant too. You could be a tradeswoman or a jewelry woman. There were elementary schools where boys and girls studied together. The young girls were in school from 7 to 12. Some girls were sent to nunnery schools to learn. They did not take the veil. Both elementary and nunnery schools taught not only reading in vernacular, but they also taught religion, prayer, and etiquette. Now, and you say they didn't take the veil. If they were, went to a nunnery school, mm -hmm. they were just educated. They didn't right. have to become nuns. They didn't have to become nuns. And you must always learn how to have the proper etiquette. Etiquette was one of the most important things to learn in the Middle Ages. However, other girls chose to stay at home and get a tutor. This is a... Uh, what do you notice about this painting? Symbol? A Ouija board? <laughs> <laughs> Close. This is actually a woman. And she is teaching geometry to monks. Oh. Isn't that interesting that a woman is teaching geometry. This was unusual because women did not teach. However, it was found in a manuscript. Hmm. This shows that this woman symbolizes geometry. So she, she is taking a maternal role and teaching monks geometry. Marriages were often determined by their families. Women were also given a dowry. This dowry helped the groom purchase first goods and to qualify for entry into the merchant guild. Thus, rich townswomen wanted the most suitable match for their daughters. So, parents, they had a competition on who was the most candidate for their daughters because they could move up. For a man, he can move up. Wives also brought their husband more than dowries. In order to be considered a citizen in a country like England or France, a person had to be a property owner. Young women who had land transfer their, hus their citizenship to their husbands who did not own land. So if a husband did not own land, marry a daughter who had land, he would move up and he could become a citizen of their country. Daughters and guilds also transfer the right of m guild membership to their husbands if they were in the same trade. Women were expected to have large families, however, infant mortality rate was high. Women also had to raise their own children and breastfeed them. The rich or middle class townswomen would have servants to help them. The women would also do household chores. Some women were expected to help their husbands with trade like carpentry, goldsmiths or carpenters. However, most women were textile, 
were prominent in the textile industry. You can see in this picture how she is spinning. They washed, dyed, spun, and wove wool or flax. Another occupation for women was midwifery. They were a lower class. They were a class lower than merchants and they would help give birth to pregnant women. Also, another craft for women was book binding and illuminating. Illuminating means they would draw on the illuminated manuscripts manuscripts like Hmm. Mommy, help me. Okay, previous. What is it? Back. See, like this, this is a form of illuminating. They would draw. See how there's a P right here? So this is called illuminating. They would draw words on a manuscript. What's the P stand for? This is a word. This was a word in a manuscript. Ah, so that okay, so that was it was the beginning, beginning of the word of the letter. Closed within each letter of the word, there was some kind of picture. Yes. But um, women who had to illuminate, they had to be educated. They had to know how to read and write. Okay. This picture is a woman giving birth. So there's a midwife right here. Okay, women of the lower class. Women in poorer classes could become a retailers. They made products and sold them. Some of these items included fish, chicken, and dairy. The women also became a wet nurses, servants, and healers. Here is a picture of a female physician. Did you know that women were also brewing ale? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brewing gave opportunities for married women because it was easy to do. They had a formula that they remembered and they would do it. They would brew ale and sell it. Eventually, women brewers declined in the later Middle Ages when men decided to take up the craft and do it. So they were dominated by the women by men and so the women were forced to move on to a new drink. These occupations required very little formal training and they learned these skills informally through their parents. So the parents would pass down their skills to them to brew ale or heal or be a physician. What do women like to do? Women like to attend festivals and celebrations. They also like to participate in games. This is a court, a spring courtship game. Young girls would gather in a wood cardboard fortress and young boys would besiege them by throwing flowers at their fort. Mm -hmm. That was how they courted. Women also like to a version of the kissing booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. 
Women also liked to attend theaters and tournaments. They also had public baths to keep them clean. As you remember, the peasant women didn't, have, didn't bathe, but this is a step higher. They had public baths to keep them clean, and it was also a way for them to socialize. Rich townswomen wore clothes of linen and high quality wool. They would make it or have it tailored. So they didn't have to make it. You could always get it through a tailor. The middle class women would make their own clothes based on their occupation. They were sturdy and durable, which was more suited for their work. So they didn't have to have luck joyous and fine clothes that you imagine in the Middle Ages. All right, we will begin. Women and nobles. When you think of a noble woman, what do you think? What do you picture? Lord's wife or something. You? Yes, nice clothes. You picture a life of Luxury, women sitting around, spinning, picture and sewing. Big pony hats, you know. Yes, they wore big horny hats. But life for a noble woman, as you will find out, is not so easy for them also. An average nobleman's fa noble woman's family was at least four to six children. Infant mortality was high in England. At least 29% of female babies died. Babies were often betrothed while they were still in their cradle. Can you imagine they were betrothed at their cradle? For instance, there's, for instance, you have a friend named Joe who has a son and you are pregnant and you just gave birth to a female and Joe comes and asks and say well I have a son could you marry off my daughter your infant daughter to my son and the mom could either say sure but them being betrothed this shows that a woman's life was not your own it is similar to dogs how when uh, dogs give birth how you give them to other the puppies to other owners it's the same thing with a woman getting betrothed babies were often given rattles to suck on other toys were given to older girls based on their gender like pots and pans and dolls made of fine wool or linen. Girls were sent to courts of the lords to study good manners and conduct. Girls who were meant for the nunnery were sent to the nunneries to be educated. Girls who were betrothed were sent to live and be educated in the family of the intended bridegroom. So this is like little Ava here is getting married to Bill down the street. Well, she has to go and live with Bill's family and she has to learn what Bill likes and how to be a good wife at a young age. Thus a girl's childhood quickly transitioned to adulthood because of this system a young girl was quickly an adult. The church law stated that the minimum age of girls marrying was 12 years old. However, most of the families really ignored that law. Numerous young girls were married off while still minors. One example was a young girl married at seven years old. And another example, 
Empress Matilda, who once had a, the only female to have a successor to be in line for the th British throne, was married to the King of Germany at age eight. Brides who were destined to the church were sent to nunneries. The brides of Christ were also given a dowry to run the nunnery. So they were given a dowry to help maintain the nunnery, the convents. And we will learn more about the nunneries in the next lecture. Men could annul their marriages based on the grounds that they were forced to marry or because the woman committed adultery. It was rare, rare for a noble woman to annul her marriage. So most of the divorcing were done by men. It was much harder for a woman to divorce her husband because of the strict laws. Noble families took greater care in registering their son's birth than their daughter. So if the son was born, they quickly registered their son's birth, but they delayed when they gave birth to a daughter. So you born. So there's there's not a lot of records kind of, of mm -hmm. women births in that period of time, huh? Right. Yeah, this well, is why well, was it to, to their advantage not to, to register their daughters? Well, they were daughters were seen as often as a nuisance, whereas sons were more valuable in the Middle Ages. Women did not suckle their children, but left them in the care of wet nurses. So they did not have any emotional ties to their child. Because of the strict social st structure and the educational system, women did not have any close or emotional ties with their children. This is a young couple about six, nine or ten getting married. And you can see the priest marrying them. Is that Roy Moore up there? Is that Roy Moore up there? I see him up there. <laughs> <laughs> because m medieval w noble women were frequently because medieval noblemen were frequently absent from their home, their wives would fulfill most of their task. So most of the time their husbands were away and it left them a period of loneliness for the wife. The women would run their estate, manage household affairs, and supervise peasants. When foreign invaders come to attack their land, they actually had to call their troops and fight to defend their estate. So they actually had to take up arms and fight for to defend their house. Women would also lease land, collect rents, receive bailiff's reports, send surplus crops to market, and maintain buildings. Women also supervise servants. With their husbands absent, they were very lonely, but they entertained themselves. For fun, women went horseback riding. It was expected of a woman to horseback to go to learn how to ride horses. It was required of a woman's education. They would falconry, play chess, backgammon, sing, dance, embroidered, and recited poetry. They had to learn poetry. They had to memorize it. it. Memorization was very, was a required necessary for both men and women. They would always have to recite poetry. For example, they said Alfred the Great could remember a lot of church laws 
and it's because he could memorize. They had to memorize. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. What does falconry? Falconry means um, setting off falcons, and the falcons would catch their prey. And they loved to read romances like women do today. They had um, troubadours, and which were men singing courtly love songs to their to the women, and they liked to hear love songs being sung to them. They liked to attend tournaments, and they also liked to host queens and noble women when they visited their towns in processions. What women wore. Women liked to take great care of their appearance. They wore clothes of silk, damask, and velvet and were made of bright colors. Women also wore high headdresses shaped like butterflies and hearts. Women wore undergarments in winter to keep them warm. And they loved to wear jewelry for instance, gemstones. Because the rooms were icy cold in the winter, women did not bathe, so they only bathed in the summer. The rest of the times they did not bathe. Women did wash their face and hands every morning. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, one little slide, which is in the Middle Ages. <laughs> okay, in the Middle Ages, they believed that there was good and bad magic that happened all around them. They think that magic existed through the means of, an, of a magician. They expected to have an immediate result from their spell. For instance, if you have were sick, they expected the witch to hurry and give them a cure to cure them. However, in the Middle Ages, witches were often seen as the devil's accomplice. Women engaged in witchcraft, so there were actually witches in the Middle Ages. <laughs> They practiced healing elixirs, love potions, and they even had curses. However, some of the accused in witchcraft were innocent. Because witchcraft was often seen as a heresy against the Catholic Church, it was up to the accused to prove his or her innocence. The witchcraft trial would provide amnesty if the accused confessed. If not, they would ask questions about demonological literature after torture. So this is a picture of them torturing and burning witches. So they would torture them first before they test them about the devil. By 1300 to 1500s, two-thirds of the people accused were poor women and most of the accusers were w done by women so women were accusing other women of being a witch so that is today's lesson up next next week we will talk about women and religion does anyone have any questions